next layer is the closest to the end user, which means that the user and the layer interact directly with the application. Some functions of this layer include identifying communication partners, determining resource availability, and synchronizing communication. When determining resource availability, the application layer has to decide whether sufficient network or the requested communication exists. Some examples of application layer implementations include, on the OSI stack, file transfer and access management protocol, X.400, common management information protocol, and on the TCP IP stack, hypertext transfer protocol, file transfer protocol, simple mail transfer protocol, and simple network management protocol. This sixth layer reformats text so that the data being sent or received is in the correct format. Data can be encrypted. It will then need to be decrypted once as it reaches the user the data was sent to. Data can be compressed and decompressed. If data is compressed, it doesn't take as long to send, but then the receiver will need to decompress the data to make it readable. Data can also be converted. Say you send a special character from a Linux-based system to a Windows system. This may not read the same way, so it will need to be translated somehow. This layer also deals with the GUI end, such as a web page with images. This fifth layer allows two or more people to communicate with each other. The session layer maintains the setup, data being sent back and forth, and terminating the session. It has security parameters by checking if the user is allowed to enter the conversation. If a connection is lost during conference, the session is able to save information periodically, preventing all data from being gone. An example of a session is when a user logs on or off. Fourth layer is the transport layer. The transport layer is responsible for delivering data to the appropriate application process on host computers. It also ensures that messages are delivered error-free, in sequence, with no losses or duplications. It also provides reliable data transfer services to the upper layers. It controls the reliability of links through flow control, segmentation, desegmentation, and error control. It keeps track of segments and retransmits any that fail. Transport layer provides message acknowledgement end-to-end, -end, provides message traffic control, which tells transmitting stations to back off in the event that no message buffers are available. It also keeps track of what messages belong to what session. There are strict size limits to messages which the transport layer can accept. These limits are imposed by the rest of the lower layers of the network. The transport layer must break up certain messages into smaller units. A header must be assigned to each unit. These headers must include control information, message start flags, and message end flags, etc., which allows the transport layer on the receiving end to recognize message boundaries. The network layer and what it does. The network layer provides the functional and procedural means of transferring variable lengths of data sequences from a source host on one network to a destination host on a different network. It is also responsible for maintaining quality service requested by the transport layer, and it is responsible for maintaining network routing functions. The network layer may even perform fragmentations and reassembly and report delivery errors. Routers operate at this level, sending data throughout an extended network. The network layer can be broken down into three sub-layers, sub-network access, sub-network dependent convergence and sub-network independent convergence. Sub-network access is the layer that considers protocols that deal with interface of network. Sub-network dependent convergence is when it is necessary to bring a level of a transit network up to a level of a different network on another side. Sub-network independent convergence handles transfers across multiple networks. link layer provides the functional and procedural means to transfer data between network entities. 
It also detects and corrects errors that have possibly occurred in the physical layer. This is the layer where the bits from the physical layer are turned into logical sequences called frames. The header contains the source or destination MAC address. Possible problems from this layer include invalid frames, collisions, and trying to use different network architectures. Layer one, which is the physical layer. This is the first and lowest layer in the OSI model. Because of all available hardware for the physical layer, it is plausible that this is the most complex layer in the OSI model. The physical layer transfers raw bits instead of data packets over a physical link. The physical layer's sublayer interfaces with data link's sublayer, the medium access control MAC.